SpaceX has checked all the boxes and is now waiting on the FAA for Starship's first orbital launch attempt. Falcon 9 completes another mission. Starlink prices go bananas. Dragon is on deck and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the news. According to SpaceNews.com, the senior advisor for national security space solutions at SpaceX declared at a space mobility panel that both Starship's orbital rated Booster 7 and the pad are in good shape after the 31 engine static fire conducted earlier this month, and was the last box in need of checking before the first orbital launch attempt. Although the FAA still needs to green light the launch via a launch license, SpaceX is targeting some time in March for liftoff. The booster conducted one last spin prime test on Friday afternoon after our previous episode dropped using just one Center Raptor engine, followed by a test of the quick disconnect. Meanwhile, work on stage zero continues. Starship Gazer captured some stills of the protective shielding we discussed last week going up around the rim of the OLM, at least one of which contains an access hatch, which is probably important to have. On Tuesday, Starship 26, the flapless ship speculated to be some kind of orbital fuel depot prototype, was put through its first cryo test. First fully filling the lower LOX tank with liquid nitrogen, then partially filling the upper methane tank also. Starship 25 was deplatformed on Thursday after accomplishing nada at the launch site since its arrival a couple months ago. Last night, it was transported back up Highway 4 and parked outside of the high bay where S27 resides, now fully stacked as of this week. Moving on, on Friday last week, SpaceX launched Inmarsat, an advanced communications spacecraft to orbit from Slick 40, Florida. The payload was deployed without issue, and the booster made its third recovery landing on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship coasting off the Atlantic coast. Starlink could be the next Falcon mission to lift off no earlier than Sunday, but if everything looks good for NASA's Crew-6 launch the following day, SpaceX will stand Starlink down. So let's talk Starlink and Dragon News. Okay. SpaceX sent Starlink users an email this week notifying them that those who live in a limited capacity area will see their service costs increase 10 more musk bucks. However, those who live in an area with excess capacity will see a 20 musk buck decrease on their monthly bill. Apparently these price changes will begin in April. At the same time costs are going up, and down I guess, SpaceX has begun offering roaming Starlink services that works almost anywhere on land according to other emails the company has sent to some customers. For $200 a month, plus a one-time $600 fee for the Starlink kit, users can connect online almost anywhere on land in the world thanks to the satellite's space lasers. The offer comes with a warning, however, in that users should expect short periods of poor to no connectivity in addition to high speeds and low latency, but will improve dramatically over time. The FAA recently proposed a 175,000 civil penalty against SpaceX for failure to submit launch collusion analysis trajectory data directly to the agency prior to the August 19, 2022 launch of the Starlink Group 427 mission. Musk's company has 30 days to respond. Like I said, NASA's next manned mission to the space station, Crew-6, is currently targeting Monday for liftoff from Pad 39A at the Cape. Their Dragon capsule, arrived at the pad's hangar over the weekend, was integrated with its Falcon Boom stick departed for and went vertical at the pad just the other day. And yet another Crew Dragon launch happening this year is Polaris Dawn, the first SpaceX mission that includes an EVA. Now targeting no earlier than this summer, the crew's commander, Jared Isaacman, recently said their capsule now contains modifications to both hardware and software that supports the EVA, and that the new EVA suit is incredible. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. Since its announcement at Gamescom 2019, and after delaying its 2020 release date three years, Kerbal Space Program 2 finally released to early access this morning. It's the sequel to the original KSP game released in 2011, which still has a cult following in nerd circles. Until now, become the administrator of the Kerbal Space Agency. Build everything your imagination can muster to send your green-skinned guinea pigs to space and beyond. A challenging physics-based aerospace simulator that will leave new players sadistically satisfied with the Kerbal genocide they couldn't stop committing even if they wanted to. Right now, the game offers everything contained in KSP-1, only with more special features, hidden surprises, and better graphics. Even tutorials for those getting started. Upgraded shoots, brah! Then throughout the months to come, additional content will be added to the game, like science gathering, colony building, interstellar travel to other systems, and multiplayer. KSP2 is currently only available for PC either through Steam or the Epic Game Store, 
but will eventually make its way to Xbox and PlayStation after it leaves early access. I purposefully stayed away from all the recent gameplay spoilers, and I'll be booting up and streaming my first impressions live here on this channel at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, so we can experience it together. Aww. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. But that will be the only gameplay video happening on this channel. Space Eccentric will continue to stay SpaceX centric. Starting tomorrow, I'll be putting all non-exclusive KSP2 gameplay on my personal channel, Cloud Liquor. So subscribe there as well. Link below in the description. Better still, receive email notifications for all my public live streams and videos for free through our Locals community. But if you can afford to be a supporter at just $5 per month, Locals is also where you can watch other exclusive content and even more KSP2 gameplay starting tonight. Where I'll be doing a second live stream so we can straight up nuke these lemmings without the judgmental input from freeloaders. But that's going to wrap up this video. I'll see you back here in a few. If I don't, be sure to have an nominal weekend. Godspeed.